Hello guys, and today is indeed the reveal of the new project car. Now if you can guess what the car is by looking behind me, you're a smart person, but I'd imagine you probably don't exactly know what this car is behind me because it's not a very common car for people to buy. Because you know me, I always buy things that are a little bit interesting. Now what I do want to say about this before I start is I made the silly decision of going and buying a 3 to V6 powered 407 coupe, which I must admit was a excellent slice of French luxury, but it left me um, quite poor. So the problem with it was, as well as being left poor because of running it, and people were offering me quite silly money for it, I had to cave in and decide to get rid. Um, and what I bought instead is still French luxury, um, and is actually based off the 508 chassis, which in essence is basically just a 407 anyway. But I bought this and uh, it's good. It's cheaper on the running costs. Uh, my tax is half, my insurance is half, and everything's just cheaper. It's also a dirty diesel again. Um, and I've also gone back to the same lump that was in my 308, which was perfect, excellent on fuel, and I'm back where we are now. So if you haven't guessed what it is yet, then I better show you, shouldn't I? Now, if that doesn't tell you what it is, then I'll show you the rest. Now, you're wondering, why does the C5 look very interesting? It's not normally this high, and I'm going to show you why. This C5 is something quite special, and you're going to see exactly what it is now. It does take its time, mind, but you will see. So look at this ridiculous 4x4 looking stance. I'm going to work some magic now. You hear the pub going now. Like I said, it takes its time, but it's eloquent and French nonetheless. Still going. <laughs> a little bit slow. But this is why I bought the car. I can turn up to events and I can look like a bit of a low boy, you know? Fake it out. Fake loads, I will admit it. Now when I'm driving, it just cruise along in perfect French luxury comfort. And already, I sat down on his ass. So of course, like always, I've come up here when something's going on in town. So you're going to hear someone else talking as well as me, but hopefully you can hear me over what's being said. But this is my glorious C5 exclusive, and this is the Tora, as you can see, in all its French beauty. Almost five metres of pure French, well, essence, whatever you want to call it. Um, but this has done 120,000 miles and it's going to be my A to B commuter. It's going to get me to and from London, all around the UK, to all of my events in comfort, slight elegance uh, and fake lows when I want fake lows. Um, I'm going to take you off of there and I'm going to take you around this car and show you what makes it quite special. So guys, here is the C5. Now this is an exclusive, so it is indeed the highest spec you can buy this car in. Um, and I must admit, I'm going to tell you the pros and cons. So this car has been owned by the previous owner um, for five years. And in fact, there's only been a few owners before that as well, and it's had a ton of stuff spent on it. Paperwork is large. Just to mention, the bugbears with this car are the following issue, there's many, but the following two important ones are the steering rack and the pump for the hydro pneumatic suspension. Now, the hydro pneumatic suspension on this is the Free Plus, which is the last ever version they bought out on this car. And I must say, it does leave it sitting very nice. Not that Citroen ever designed it to look like that. It was designed to actually be able to load the car up and lift back up to drive height. But I must say, it looks glorious. And this has actually had the steering rack done and it's had the pump for the suspension. It's full service history, clean MOT. And you're thinking, what is the catch? Well, I'm gonna tell you <laughs> in just a moment. Um, I had a choice of two cars. So I had a newer um, facelift sedan that I was gonna go and get. Um, but after test driving it, it turned out I had some problems with the suspension. Now, if you know anything about the pneumatic suspension on this system, on this car, it's very sensitive, but also what's worse about it is it's very costly when it goes wrong. So this had excellent history, excellent paperwork for it, um, and it's pretty much outstanding in every way apart from one. And you're probably thinking, 
what's the problem does it come with only one seat what is the problem you are going to see <laughs> very soon and it is sad but it's one of these things so i had to choose with this car to have it come with a special edition one of a kind special racing stripe down one side of the car now you're not going to see the video now but i'm going to show you so basically yeah i actually bought a car with a key mark on it which was not really a good idea because the paintwork's going to cost at least half a grand to sort but it's a solid car i'll show you the uh the damage down the side so the key mark starts running its way through my wing um i managed to polish most of it out here but it begins down the doorway not very straight i must add uh, and then it sort of joins into two here and goes the whole way up the side. It's sort of gone a bit with polishing again, but it runs all the way through the entire passenger side of the car, which I must admit to you is really annoying. But is it good paint and the car not working properly, which the white one was? Or is it a good car which is a bit rough around the edges? You know what I've done and you know what I've chosen. I must say also, these 17 inch rims are quite a rarity on these. Um, they normally sit on 16s and 19s. They did do 17s and 18s on these. Um, I'm going to what I'm going to do with wheels. Um, I quite like them. A little bit boring, but the thing is, if you jump up tyre sizes, you ruin the comfort. So it's just one of those things, really. Do I decide to go up a wheel size or do I keep it as is? Because the fitment, and it drops, it sits lovely on these 17s with the big old 55 profiles on. So I'm not really too sure what I'm going to do about it, really. But yeah, I have bought it. So as I said, this is a top spec. It's a two litre six speed auto. Yes, I'm a lazy. Yes, I am a wafter. So with my very flamboyant suspension, I also have a very wishy-washy gearbox that makes its mind up some of the time about what it wants to do. Um, but I'm gonna have a little walk around now and just show you uh, some of the mods I've done so far, because it's barely anything. Uh, talk about some of the plans at the end. Um, and I'll just show you some of the general specs. So on the front end, you'll see all of my black trims. So down the side, uh, on the rear diffuser and the front end, I repainted these in a lovely gloss black. It looks so much better than the horrible faded plastic. Um, when I bought it on the front bumper, the towing eye was missing. I've actually bought one and repainted it. And you'll see my painting skills are pretty good because it looks pretty bang on. Uh, also, one of the mirrors was also broke. So I've had to get a new mirror as well, which is slightly mismatched. Uh, mitts matched the actual plastics of different colors which is something i've got to sort out um, but the mirror does actually indeed work and is functional rather than the other one that was hanging off um, but on the front end um, this comes with the directional headlights um, this one does have the drl option along the bottom here which is just a bulb in the preface lift like this one um, but it isn't switched on on the car but it can be switched on um, and actually it isn't featuring normally these come with front parking sensors but this one just seems to be devoid of them which is a bit odd being top spec but maybe it's something you had to spec on with the car i'm not really too sure like i said these 17s are an optional extra they are also quite rare um when i put up in the chat about going from 17s to 19s which is what i was looking at everyone was telling me to stay with these so i think the 17 inch size is what is going to be definitely staying now down the side i've put a set of dynamic indicators the flashy dashy led ones that look quite smart obviously we've had tints down the side of the car as well um, and i must admit there's gonna be a lot more to come wind deflectors are one of which of the many things i'm doing that are coming this week and i guess in terms of damage while i mention it the wings had someone fingering it or something here for quite a while which is pretty poor um but it's not too bad of a bar so the driver's side here we are you have a lovely little Citroen emblem as you come on in. You can see mine is literally almost about to touch 121,000 miles. Um, this steering wheel, which is weird because the steering wheel actually moves in the center stage still. It's very French and very quirky, I must admit. Now the driver's seat, among all the functions I mentioned, also has a massage function that feels like someone is fisting your spine, um, but it is somewhat quite nice when you're semi-sleepy. And then there we are, we have the six speed auto box electric handbrake that i hate and oodles of buttons like you get in this age of french car and there's a sat nav that is offset to the left hand side for no real reason um, i must admit the dials are also very nice which i'll show you now and yes this car has been excellent so far completely faultless and it's got a lovely center display look very clear lots of different adjustments on there as well lots of settings it's decent it's nice the nav is definitely out of date i mean it seems to be older 
than the car. The nav seems to be older than the actual car, if that makes sense. So it's it's woefully out of date. I do need to get that updated, definitely. Um, but we're going to talk more about the specs and all the details about this car very soon. But I just thought I'd show you a very quick tour of my new car. Um, and plans-wise, there's not too much about it. We're going to have a little fill around with the engine, get a bit more performance out of it, make it a little bit noisier, all that sort of thing. Um, the engine is quite a tunable one from Peugeot. The 2 litre 140 is very reliable. DW10. Lovely engine. The gearbox is actually also somewhat quite decent for a French car as well. So I'm definitely excited for the ownership and it will definitely be very beneficial to use for all applications. I can go to meets and look low. When I go to meets, I can climb over curbs. I can climb over small hills because the suspension goes whoosh, straight up. Um, and also, I forgot to mention on the back, I have got a fold down detachable tow bar as well, which can, uh, can tow up to 1.5 ton. So I'm also going to be repping the tow bar, which might come quite in useful at some of the car shows and events that I choose to go to. One other thing I forgot to mention, you will see now, is this has a pano roof with an automatic rear slide. A little bit noisy, I must admit. A little bit like my pump for my suspension, but it's an old car. What do you really expect? But that is just a few things about this car that makes it quite unique. And guys, I don't want to talk no more, but I hope you enjoy my new project series that is coming to this channel from now on.